into this real talk session tonight. Y'all ready for it? All right. All right. Real Talk Tuesday, where we have real talk, have real people with real issues, uh, and we believe that tonight is going to bless you. Uh, this Real Talk Tuesday, uh, we have super, super panel guests that we believe will bless your socks off tonight. Uh, we're going to open it up and kind of give you just a snapshot of who they are. We're going to allow them to introduce their themselves. Let us know kind of what you do in ministry or what do you feel is important for tonight. I work in media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but my name is Pastor Sky. Um, yes, I do work in media, and um, whether that's Facebook, whether that's the recaps here, whether that's creating videos for our social media, yes. um, God has just gifted me in that area, and I love it. I love people. I love sharing the Word of God. So putting me kind of in media for Fort Christian Center, that was God ordained because He knew I would love it. I would enjoy every minute of it. Amen. 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 I'm Pastor Anthony, and this here is my beautiful wife, Sky. And uh, yeah, I'm in the media ministry as well. Um, wonderful place for me to be. I, I, yeah. I love serving in media. It's one of those things where I get to serve. Yeah. You know, so it doesn't feel like it's work. It doesn't feel like yeah. a struggle. Yeah. I love serving in media. Um, also, I love teens. Um, my wife and I, we share a podcast together, and, and that's dedicated to teens and young adults. And, uh, and I just, I just, Love the Lord, man. I love these pastors right here. They're the real we deal. We love you back. We love you back. Real deal on yes. Tuesday night. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, Amen. And we love that they love uh, <laughs> media. It's one of those things that uh, if you're going to want to be a uh, modernized church, if you want to uh, be one of those churches that get the gospel out uh, in today's time, you have to have a strong media team, um, yes. you know. We don't pass out tracks anymore, you know. Yes. Um, you know that that time, that day, and that time, it was good for that day and that time. Yes. But nowadays, uh, God uses technology. He uses Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, yes, of course, we have to share the gospel. You know, uh, we could do that face to face. Yes. But um, I believe the message stays the same, yes. but the method will become different. Yes. And I thank God that these guys um, are creative. They're a creative team. They bring creativeness to us, you know, uh, and, and, and they are a blessing because I think a lot of times as pastors, we have to sometimes be the mind or the brains behind the ministry. But with this couple, they're the mind and the brains behind the ministry that they run. And they bring creative ideas and they bring intuitiveness, you know, uh, and innovation uh, to the Ford Christian Center. So I thank God for uh, the pastors that he has blessed us with here at Forward Christian Center. Amen. Amen. So tonight, it is Real Talk Tuesday. Uh, we've been discussing over the past two Tuesdays, mm -hmm. uh, we've had a panel of our pastors and ministers to come up and share some of the things that they've encountered during this pandemic. Uh, as many of you all, we are human beings as well. As pastors and ministers, we have the same things that you have to encounter, we encounter as well. So we wanted to bring light to some of the things that we have to experience so that the partners know that you're not in this thing by yourself. Yes. We're in this thing yeah. together. We're yeah. all a collective body. All of us have the same things that we're experiencing, but we can shed some light on some of the things that we do uh, when we're going through, when we're tested, when we're tried, when we're faced with sickness, or disease. We're trying to kind of bring a little light to some of the things that we do. So let's get ready to get in the Word. Hey Amen. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31 and 8. That's our foundational text, Deuteronomy 31 and 8. For those that uh, need the Word, you can raise your hand. We have some deacons and elders that will uh, give you the hard word. Um, but if you don't want to do that, we have it on the screen. Uh, Deuteronomy 31 and 8 reads as this. The Lord himself goes before you, and he will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. Thank you for opening up our eyes, our ears to hear what your spirit says. Thank you for giving us the word that we need so yes. we can continue to live on. Father, we even thank you for your word because it allows faith to rise. We're here and we're allowing our faith to rise because your word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we believe your, your word and we believe that it is true. 
and our faith will be at the level that it needs to be yes. so that we can live a victorious life. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. And the church said? Amen. amen. And amen. Deuteronomy 31 and 8, it says, The Lord he himself, he will go before us. And he will not only go before us, but it says that he will also be with us. My thought is that um, it shows, based on this scripture, that no matter what we go through, mm -hmm. God is going to always be there. Yeah. And if God is going to always be there, no matter what life brings our way, everything is going to be all right. Yes. When I start thinking about the Lord, I think about him uh, being our father and the nature that a father carries for his sons and daughters. Um, as a parent, I know that as a father, um, if it's within my power, I won't let anything negative happen to my son and daughter because I love them and I care for them. And um, no matter what they go through, I'll never run out on them. And when I see this scripture, I believe it speaks the same thing, that no matter what you go through, good, bad, ups, downs, mm -hmm. coronavirus, yeah. no coronavirus, God will be with you every step of the way. Yes. And I believe he's a good, good father. Mm -hmm. And because he's a good, good father, he's going to always keep your best interests in mind. Amen. Come on, give God some Amen. praise for that. That's good stuff. So tonight we have some questions that we're going to be imposing on our panel because we want to make sure that you all hear their heart and see some of the things that they've gone through so that they can kind of help navigate some of your thoughts. Maybe you have been going through and you don't know uh, some of the things that you should be doing. So we're going to ask them this first question, and it is this. What were some of your initial thoughts and reactions when you first heard of the coronavirus? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting real. Yeah. Well, my first impression, thoughts, actions, um, I, I can't lie, there was a, a bit of fear that initially jumped in. Uh, but because God is a good, good father, mm. and he prepares, one of the things he does too is that he prepares his kids. I mean, if you're attentive to his word, if you come in on Sundays, if you tune in on the lives, if you hear on Tuesday nights, mm -hmm. he's seeding word in us. Uh, the thing about a seed is that seeds may not grow overnight, where well, they don't grow overnight, but they do begin a process of regerminating, yes. taking root, uh, and they spring up when it's necessary. And so fear came, but fear didn't stay. Amen. Come on, come on. So um, I, I had to tune out a lot of social media because you began to see the the, uh, the, the theories and just a lot of people talking, a lot of stuff. And I had to get to the root of what was actually going on. Mm -hmm. Had to begin to ignore a lot of things. And um, for a while, I was looking at social media and the news just to get the information. Mm -hmm. But then I had to turn it off and I had to get back into the Word to know exactly what it was of me that God was expecting. We had yes. to talk to each other, talk to family, call mom and dad, and make sure everybody was prepared. But that initial thought was, um, God, is this the end? Are we, are we walking up Matthew 24, 25? Um, and wh whatever it was, I just know in my heart that I was prepared and ready. I had to be level-headed. You know, I had to get a lot of stuff out because I know there was people calling me that was dependent upon me. And I had yes. to be uh, full of the word of God to be able to give a, a proper response yes. and not give into the fear and talk like they talking and yeah. reacting and behaving like they were behaving. Yeah. Wow. Yes, yeah. yes, good stuff. For me, to be honest with you, I didn't know what was going on. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, and what I mean by that is it went from one hour at work, things being normal, to mm -hmm. people just losing their mind. And wow. I honestly, I sat there thinking, what is going on with y'all? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought, literally. Mm -hmm. Because um, my previous manager, she is, you know, I say this lovingly, she is about that drama life. So mm -hmm. for her, the world was coming to an end. God wow. was about to come on the cloud. I mean, she, <laughs> she was like, y'all need to log off and go to the grocery store. You need to buy everything. Because at 5 o'clock, you ain't going to have no tissue. I was wow. like, oh, So she was one of the ones that were buying all that yeah, tissue. You know, That's why we can't get none. Exactly. Yeah. She was calling yeah. her mama, going around, <laughs> having her drive around town for sanitizer. And I remember sitting there thinking, Lord, like, am wow. I missing something? Because at that moment, I really was calm. I didn't know what what the, all the hype was about, if you will. And so, but I didn't want to be out of order from the standpoint of was God sending me something mm -hmm. like a, a warning? So I was like, mm -hmm. well, okay, I'll clock out. So I went to Publix and y'all, I promise y'all, it was like the Independence Day movie, y'all. People was crazy. <laughs> Buggies was running everywhere. I was like, 
there's something, maybe something is wrong with me. Because at wow. that time, I really was fine. Yeah. And so after I finally got home from work, because we left early, we finally mm -hmm. got to the house. And I remember that night, I said, okay, Father, talk to me. Mm -hmm. Because am I missing something? I don't want to miss a moment if it's yeah. something that we yeah. really need to be aware of. Yeah. And what I heard him say is, the coronavirus was never supposed to be for my children. Mm -hmm. Ooh, hold on, hold on, pause. Pause. We got to back that thing up. Beep, beep. Say that one more time. In the kitchen, I'll never forget, he said the coronavirus was never supposed to be for my children. So that led me to other questions. I said, okay, Father, so you're saying supposed to, so that tells me that some of us are going to get it. Mm. If you're saying supposed to, that means, you know, whatever this thing can do to the body, you're telling me that it may happen. Mm. So I said, okay, so I'm listening. I was like, so what do you want me to do with that? And what I remember him saying is, according to your faith. Mm. I said, okay. And after that, there was more of a calmness for me, but the dynamic that I found myself in is I had to live out my faith for more than just me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My mom is yeah. with me. Yeah. Come my on, husband come on, is with me. Come on. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of other dynamics that had to direct the things that I did and even the things that I said, because you have to understand, even though my household is safe, my brother is not. Mm. So he's calling me from Atlanta. He's mm. concerned. Y'all, if I took a picture outside, I was getting a phone call. Why y'all outside? You ain't got no mask on. You ain't got no... It was crazy. They didn't want you to breathe the oxygen. I couldn't breathe the oxygen. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got that too. They were like, uh, why y'all outside? We got to breathe. So, and my thought was, whether you're outside or inside, you're still breathing yes. our air. Yes. 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 So those were my initial thoughts that God gave us a calmness about us, but again, it was walking it out because now you have other people pulling on your faith in a brand new way. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now you said a mouthful, and I want to um, just just get y'all's thoughts on it because um, I heard you say that um, the Lord said, "As your faith is, mm. so it be unto you." Um, you know what does what does that really mean? As your faith is, so it be unto you. Because when I start thinking about faith, I know all of us we have. A measure of faith. Yeah. We have a level of faith. Our scripture says, I've given you a measure of faith. So no matter whether you're a child or an adult, yes. God has given us that measure of faith. Yeah. But she began to mention another scripture that says, as your faith is, so it be unto you. Mm -hmm. And my thought is, um, because that was said, we have to make sure that our faith is at a level that it needs to be at. Yes. If we're going to combat this coronavirus. Yes. So, yeah. so so let's get so let's let me get both of y'all's thoughts on that. Yeah. Yeah, yo, as your faith is, so it be unto you. What does that mean to you? I mean, th to me, it, it goes back to something I said earlier: is that you have to be in a place to where your faith is getting fueled, is, is, mm -hmm. is getting fed. You know, where you're availing yourself to truth, because yeah. everything is out there. Everything is competing for your time, your attention. Uh, but you have to be in a place to where your faith is getting fed, and that's why I thank God for a word church. I yes. thank God yes. for, for pastors. Um, pushing us in the way that they did because we had behind the scenes meetings, you know, a lot of yep. people weren't privy to the meetings that we had, but our pastors, they did not lay down. They wasn't, you know, crying about stuff. You know, they began to challenge us even the more. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that push that um, perpetuated my faith that they, they helped uh, prepare my faith. And so, uh, but what about the people who are not pastors? You know, just, yeah. I'm not going to say just your regular people, but, but the ones who are not pastors, that meant to me that, Again, I had to be level-headed because yeah. people were calling on me. Yes. Mm. And, and uh, as we say here, mm -hmm. they're going to eat from your life. Mm. They're going to be pulling from your life, the text, the phone call. Uh, we don't have time to be playing into a whole bunch of worry and yes. messes. Yes. Yes. Right yes. away, we had to begin speaking yes. faith. God gave me this, this, mm -hmm. this way where I could uh, be quiet, listen to people. And when they were empty, had nothing else to say, now you got room for Jesus and you got room for mm -hmm. faith. And I was able mm -hmm. to pour, pour in and seed into uh, where doubt and fear was. And for me, it was a matter of, you know, one of my favorite scriptures, and you guys have heard me say it a thousand times, that you shall decree a thing. You shall decree a thing, yes. and it shall be established. So for me, even when the enemy came in, because you got to understand, we're not super saints to the degree that we are, you know, eliminated from Satan trying to pounce on us. Yeah. He's going to come the minute you hit the floor. So as yeah. soon as your eyes wake up, yeah. he's going to try to, you know, 
uh, convince you you have a symptom going on or something's going on. Mm -hmm. And I had to continue to decree. I had to continue to say what it was going to be. Yes. And the funny thing about that is um, we found out later on in the year that we actually had coronavirus in February. Wow. We actually already had it. Yes. And I remember, y'all, it was the worst feeling ever. I mean, I could not breathe. I, You guys know you've been in my house. I could not walk up and down the stairs. Mm -hmm. I would do like two or three steps at a time, and I would be grabbing my chest. Yes. I mean, my asthma pump, I haven't had to have, as, use asthma in forever, but I always keep one in the house for moments when I need to assistance, if you will. Nothing was working. And so when we went to the doctor, I believe just because it was so new, because it was mm -hmm. in February, mm -hmm. it wasn't as crazy as it gotten by March. They didn't know what it was. They actually told me, they said, um, you have symptoms like the flu, but your test for the flu came back negative. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what it is, but we're just going to give you Tamiflu. Just take yeah. this. Yeah. So I did, but what God, you know, it's amazing that when the enemy tried to come in and bring fear, because like I said, my mom, who is 73, her room is literally right around from mine, guys. I mean, it is, we're right there. When the enemy tried to come in and say, you know, if you do this or if you go out or if you do this, you're going to bring something back to her. God brought back to my memory. He said, but I already kept her when you had it. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. And when you, when God says that to you, you kind of tighten up mm -hmm. that he kept her when we actually had it. And here's the enemy trying to give me a fear when I don't have it, yes. you know? So it brings things into perspective um, about how you're going to walk out your faith. You cannot allow somebody else to dictate your blessing. Yes. You have to decree what you want. You have to know that it's going to be established and God will honor your faith. Yes. Wow. I love That's that. Good. That's good. That's good. Good. Come on, good praise God for that. How he keeps us, how he provides for us. Uh, like she says, earlier on, a lot of people didn't know about the coronavirus. And I remember the time that they were ill. And I was like, wow, whatever they got is holding on for dear life. I kept saying, Pascal, how you feeling? She's like, uh-uh. <laughs> And it was rough. So, you know, of course, no one knew about it at that time. But I thank God for his keeping power, yes. how he kept her all through that season. Also yep. keeping uh, Pastor Franklin as well. And a few other saints that I, pro I feel probably. Pastor Blackman, yes. Karen, yes. and some of those others. Sierra, who they yeah. told had walking pneumonia. Yeah, I was like, that's how what you it got walking pneumonia? Yeah. But they didn't know how to diagnose it at that moment. But I thank God for how he kept the saints of God yeah, yeah. covered and protected yes. so that is how God does he keeps us he protects us he holds us up with his righteous right hand there's nothing that our God cannot do he's always going before us yes. making every crooked path yes. straight so yes, I yes, thank yes. God for the God that he is amen amen yes. amen yes. Psalms 55 and 22 says this cast your burden yes. on the Lord and he will sustain you mm. he will never permit the righteous mm. to be moved anybody righteous yeah. raise your hand if you're righteous online if you're righteous raise your hand yeah I yeah yeah yeah. yeah so this is something that god has made exclusively for you mm -hmm. those that are righteous he said he will never permit the righteous to be moved he's going to sustain us and my thought is when i start thinking about things that sustain us um, it is something that will keep you above board. Mm -hmm. It will keep you above water. You might seem like you're drowning or you might seem like you don't have quite enough. But God says, hold on, hold on. I'm going to sustain you. Yes. I'm going to preserve you. I'm going to uh, cause you to continue to thrive in unthriving situations. Mm -hmm. And when I start looking at this scripture, I start uh, remembering how God has continued to bless us mm -hmm. he's had he has continued to keep us yes, he has. we are we are still ha we still have good health and although some people may have been stricken with COVID-19 they got sick and then they got healed yeah. and then they got well yeah. and now they're better yeah. and I just thank God you know for his faithfulness yes. and um and after, what is that song great is thy faithfulness mm -hmm. oh lord my father yes, yes. when I start thinking about how faithful God is 
for his people. None of us, we have lost our lives. Amen. We don't have any tragedies around here. All the partners of the Ford Christian Center, although some of us may have been stricken, God healed us and he brought us back. What was happening? God was sustaining us. He was keeping you when you didn't even know how to keep yourself. While you even had coronavirus and they didn't even know how to diagnose it properly, God still brought you through because he had some things exclusive for those that are righteous. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. Yes. So let's ask another question to our panel. Uh, what scripture or thought has been your go-to during this season? Hey Amen. Psalms 91. Mm. Um, and th th the scripture you just read as well, uh, to, to cast. Yes. Uh, I, I love that scripture and I always like to say that, you know, that that scripture is about um, an exchange mm -hmm. that have to take place. It, it puts the ball back into your court if you will. Um, casting to me even makes me think of if I hold on in another second too long, it's possible I may not give it up. Mm -hmm. So it's a move, it's an aggressive move. You yes. can cast it, almost throw it. Because those cares and worries, sometimes we like to have them because they make us feel comfortable. Sometimes they're familiar. And, uh, and I love that because it says to cast, to just give it away. And in exchange, I'm going to give you something, a part of me, something that's better for you. That Psalms 91, um, it, if I'm abiding even in the shadow, I mean, yeah. it, it kind of suggests on, that on. I haven't even got to him yet. Just the shadow. Mm. And the thing about shadows, like if you look around here, you know, shadows can move. Shadows can make things look bigger than what they are. They can confuse mm. things. And I think about even the shadow of my dad and confusing the enemy, mm. you know, making him think I'm going one way. Here I am going another way yes. uh, in worry. But now I'm operating in faith. I begin to think about that stealing away in Psalms 9. They want to steal away. I think about eagles and how they have to steal away they got to get somewhere yeah. high enough to where yeah. they can't be eaten up because the eagles are the best of the best when it comes to hunting yeah. that's me that's you um and so we have to steal away we have to get into that hiding place yes i think about where the scripture where it said i'm sorry y'all i think about later on in the scripture in, in psalms 91 where it begins to talk about what you may see with your own eyes them falling to the left yeah. to the right of you, but come it on. would not come, come not your dwelling. dwelling. Yes. Yes. And I had to stand on that word because they were very close to me. Close yes. friends of mine yes. were dying. Yes. Yes. Not only getting it, but they were dying from this wow. thing. Wow. And I'm looking at it like, this is, these are people I know firsthand, but, the, yes. but your word says to me, I have to stand on Psalms 91. Even though I see it, I may witness it, mm -hmm. it would not come near my dwelling. So we were literally praying and anointing our doorposts. We yes. was going out in our uh, driveway yes. and we were we were declaring things in the driveway. They looked yes. at us like we was crazy, but we were doing Psalms 91. Yes, Ooh, yes, that, yes. Now that, that, that's good. That's good. Come on, put your hands together. Because I, I think uh, because we live in this modern society, uh, when you start talking about anointing your doorposts <laughs> and, and all kind of stuff, people yes. think that that is foreign and, and that is strange. But um, it, uh, um, walk it, up it's, here now. You gonna see all these crosses on <laughs> the door, all this oil dripping. All the houses are yeah. oily. The windows yeah. is oily. You see yeah, it's still crazy dripping. House. Yeah, 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 grease yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> but when but when you start thinking of the importance of protecting your family, mm -hmm. and the, these things are what we call prophetic gestures mm -hmm. that they use in the Bible. You may say, well, Pastor Charles, what is a prophetic gesture? It's it's just like Joshua mm -hmm. and the children of Israel marching around the walls. Mm -hmm. It was a prophetic gesture because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't yes. make sense that if you're going to try to fight somebody, mm -hmm. you're going to march around the walls <laughs> and God going to give you the victory. Yes. That is a prophetic gesture. Mm -hmm. But Joshua, he believed God. Yes. And when he marched around the walls, we all know the story. The walls came tumbling, tumbling down. down and God gave them the victory. Yes. Likewise, when you anoint your doorposts, mm -hmm. they're doing it in faith. Yes. That is a prophetic gesture yeah. because the scripture that says that, you know, when you anoint your doorposts, you're pleading the blood or you're anointing yes. the blood of Jesus yes. upon your house. So when sickness comes yeah. or when the yeah. death angel comes, yeah. he has to pass over. That's a prophetic gesture. Mm -hmm. So so we as believers we're in a time where we got to believe God's word. Yes. And we got to trust God's word. Yes. And we got to know that God's word is truth. How yes, do I know it, it? Because the word says thy word is 
true. That word is true. So we just got to begin to understand that uh, whatever God says in his word, mm -hmm. he can still perform it. Yes, he can. Now, yes, he those can. miracles just wasn't for those uh, past saints. No, they are for us as believers. Yes. Because if God said that we can have it and he can do it, yes. we can have it and he can do it in our yes, lives. Yes, he can. Absolutely. Yes, yes. And one thing that I would just like to add, because, you know, my husband's already talked about Psalms 91, but this morning I woke up to this, and I would just like to share it with you because it blew my mind. I had never heard, I've never heard of the spirit of life in the way that this has broken it down. But Romans 8 and 2 says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. And what I love about the devotion, if you will, that there was a uh, particular governor in Africa who, in the midst of one of their worst pandemics, mm -hmm. he didn't get sick at all. And someone who was interviewing him at that time said, how is it that you did not get sick when everybody else in Africa is dying? Mm -hmm. And I would like to read to you what he said. He says, that is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Mm. As long as I keep my soul in contact with the living God, mm. no germ can attach itself to me. My spirit and body are so filled with the blessed presence of God, it even oozes from my pores. Ooh, that's good stuff. Man. So when I woke up this morning and read that, I was like, God, you are amazing. Because the reason why he talked about his pores is in that interview, they were sitting around scientific people. And so he told, some, he told the scientists, he said, I want you to take um, some, some of the virus, if you will, and put it up under your microscope. He did that, and he saw the germs moving around. Mm -hmm. He said, now give me that container. He put it in his hand, allowed the germs to get on his hands never felt one thing and mm. that's the reason why he said that he is so full yes. with the spirit Ooh. of life that he sin and death cannot even come near him because again it's according to his faith all yes. of us got the same scripture come on come on it. Yes. amen 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 that's good stuff put your hands together amen, amen. connect with it connect with it because uh, the scripture says if i'm not mistaken you shall tread over serpents yes. and you shall tread over scorpions yes. Hold on, serpents, serpents, they bite you. Yeah. Scorpions, they sting you. <laughs> but yet, through it all, you can still walk in God's healing. Because yes. the spirit of life yes. is oozing out of you. Yes. What's the spirit of life? God's yes. spirit yes. that's living in you. Holy Spirit. Yes. Man, we got the spirit of life living in us. Yes, do. Don't you minimize the importance of God in your life? Yes. Don't you minimize the importance of what God is doing? God is literally keeping us alive every day. Yeah. I think it was this past Sunday when I said that uh, God has given us his Ruah breath, mm. his breath of life. Mm. Well, he breathes into us. Yes. And as long as he breathes into us, mm -hmm. nothing can snatch the life out of us. Yes. Death, the death angel, he can't even do anything yes. unless yes. God signs our death certificate. Yeah. 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 Get it in your mind. That's good. Unless God signs the death certificate, yeah. the death away. angel ain't even got authorization. Mm -hmm. He ain't even got jurisdiction. Yes. So likewise, as it relates to coronavirus, the only way it can stricken our body is if God allows it. Yes. And this is why we're telling you to keep your faith up. She's yes. telling you, as your faith is, so it be unto you. Yes. How do you allow your faith to continue to rise? Stay under the word of God. Yes. Continue to feed your faith yes. the word of God. And as you continue to feed your faith the word of God, your measure of the Lord will begin to rise, mm -hmm. and he'll protect you from sickness and disease. Yes. Amen. And God can continue to keep, yeah, y'all praise him. Yeah. That's good. God will continue to keep you. I think that uh, a lot of times people go in over into fear when they don't keep the word of God before their eyes. It's hard to stay in faith when so many people are talking fear. Everything around us is fear. Everything is, is fear-based. The news, the radio, the 
Facebook, Instagram, whatever, there's fear all around. It wants us to feel like if, you know, everything is going to go down, but mm -hmm. we have to trust God. You can yeah. only build your faith by staying in the word of God. If everything around you is uh, negative and everything or everything that's being said is negative, you're going to start going towards that negative wave. But you make sure that you're with people that are going to keep you uplifted. One of the things that we begin to do when this pandemic first broke out, we got with our pastors and leaders. We told them we speak in nothing but faith. Faith every single day. You speak it. You encourage people. You tell them God is going to make the way. Yeah. Yes, we believe in science. Science has its place. God created the scientists. God created those that create medicine. And we thank God for them. But who holds the trump card is God Ooh. himself. And if he can keep and he is able to keep us. So we don't rely on science. We don't make that our primary source or resource. We make God the source of everything that we say and do. Yeah, we see the, the Surgeon General, he says what he says. And Dr. Fowler, he says what he says. But I'm leaning and depending on he Holy Spirit to guide me through the pandemic. I can't be afraid to come out of my house. I can't be afraid to do what I got to do. I got to trust God. I got to believe God. If God says don't touch that I ain't touching it if God <laughs> says give that person talking to you you better make sure you get that six feet you gonna give me my six feet <laughs> and I'm gonna follow the Holy Ghost I'm not gonna walk around afraid to do what I gotta do I'm trusting God through all things amen and why amen that's good and while you were talking I began to think about uh you begin to say how we shouldn't let science trump uh what God's voice is yeah. uh in our life and when you start thinking about it, um, uh, this world is so consumed with uh, the things geared around science, and they're mm -hmm. trying to figure out this whole virus. But when I start looking at the Word of God, I understand that God's Word comes to us two different ways. Mm -hmm. he, it comes to us by what they call a Logos Word, mm -hmm. and then it also comes to us by a Rhema Word. Mm -hmm. When you start looking at Logos, it's nothing more than a word that comes out of the science arena, mm -hmm. Logos logic it is something that comes from your mind mm -hmm. and and my thought is that as a believer some believers they're stuck on the logos mm -hmm. the general word of god the scientific word the mm -hmm. the uh that that type of logical word but god is saying to us as believers don't get caught up on the logos the mm -hmm. scientific get caught up in the rhema word yes why? Because the rhema word will tell you where you need to go, yes. what you need to do, yes. how you need to operate, what you need to eat on a day-by-day -day basis. Yeah. He speaks to us, and he gives us what we need personally in our lives. Mm -hmm. For some, he may say, during this time, go on a strict diet, eat a whole lot of fruits and veggies and yeah. all those kind of things. What is that? That's a rhema word specifically yeah. for you. Yeah. So God is saying, keep your ears open, mm -hmm. not just for my logos word for everybody, mm -hmm. but for my rhema, my specific word only for you yes. because we got to understand that when God speaks to us and he gives us his rhema word that's exclusively for us mm -hmm. although you might be married if God give your husband a word you better believe he'll give you your word too yeah. Yeah. and your word might be different than your spouse yeah. word yeah. and your word might be different from your children's word yeah. but during this season we got to make sure that we're hearing God's rhema word for ourselves mm -hmm. because when we do that he'll lead us in the green pastures yes, yes. yes. that's good Anything y'all want to share concerning that? Well, I mean, I was thinking about, you know, faith. And, uh, you know, faith has a time. Mm. Now. Mm -hmm. Now faith, faith is. Now. Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, I've learned in this pandemic and during this time that faith has a, a certain walk. Mm -hmm. Faith has a certain talk. Faith sounds a certain way. Yes, it does. Faith moves a certain way. Don't it move does. like everybody else. Come on. Yes, you know, three o'clock in the morning, faith is saying, hey, yo, aunt, I need you to get up, mm -hmm. go downstairs, crack open your word, put on some praise music, begin to worship, begin to pray over your wife, begin to pray over your sons and your daughters. Faith do those things that make you feel uncomfortable. Faith to get you out of your uncomfortable zone, yes. out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. The things that you would normally do, faith cause you to, to do something completely different. Sometimes you don't even know why you're doing some of the things you're doing. And there was, a, there was many a times I remember uh, I would wake up 
praying for my mom and praying for my brother and praying for my dad. And, you know, Hallelujah. I didn't have to understand. All I know is that faith said, yo, you need to start praying. Yeah. Later on, maybe a day or two later, I would begin to hear how there was something that came up. And I know the prayer that I prayed because I was yes. obedient in that yes. now faith, yes. it began to move. It began to, to, to cover my family and cover other people. And so I thank God for being in a place again uh, where, where my faith is being. I'm choking up. It's I'm all not, good. Not, it's, all, it's all good. I yes. just thank God that I'm in a place to where I am just so challenged and pushed to come up out of uh, behavior patterns of what I saw modeled before me when I was younger. Um, everybody just, just flying off the loose end and where, mm. where uh, the norm was acting crazy and anxiety and foolish. That was the norm. Mm. And that's what we thought was always right. That's what we, we thought it was to do. And um, I'm in a place now to where my faith is being challenged and I'm hitched up to a, to a wife and to a mother in love and yes, to other believers yes, yes, uh, yes. that believe the same. We all yes, talk yes, the same. Yes, we yes, do yes, the same. Yes. And so we're moving um, with one mind and in one accord. And, Hallelujah. and the beautiful thing is that we are seeing the results. Mm. We see the results. We hear it. Yes. So we're not only believing God for faith, but faith is saying, now go do. Yes. Ooh. yes, yes, yes. The only thing that I would add um, to that is know how to filter out information, you know. Like Pastor Charles and Pastor Zay were just saying, you know, if you're anyone like me, I love information. I love learning. I'm a student. I love to learn. But the difference is I filter that through the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I never allow my desire to learn so much to override what God is saying. Yeah. So I take the information and I use it as he tells me to. And I, what I mean by that is just because I was watching the news, they dropped a very good tip. They said a lot of people are washing their hands. Kudos for those who just started washing y'all hands. But, you know, what got me is he said, but people don't realize that one of the nastiest places that you can put your hands on is in the grocery store. And that's when you grab the door to the frozen food. I never thought about that. So the frozen food little door is grabbed by hundreds of people, thousands of people every day. Mm -hmm. So you so busy washing your hands, you, all you're doing is just putting that stuff right back on. So when I heard that, I was like, okay, so now I just need to be aware, yeah. but not afraid. Yeah. It's stop me from going to public. Come on, come on. I just come put on. a glove on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If you are that person, if you are inquisitive, if you are that person that's watching CNN, don't allow CNN to dictate what you need to do. Yeah. Filter that through the Holy Ghost because some of that stuff, it don't even, uh, it doesn't even um, uh, matter for your situation, yes. if you will. You yes. know, there's yeah. some things that just don't don't matter. I've been washing my hands since I was two, so I didn't have to be like, oh God, let me start washing. No, I, I've been doing that. So that's my my advice to you guys. If you guys are watching that information, that's wonderful. Learn. But don't get your life hooked up on that. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes stuff. they can exaggerate. Yes. Uh, a, a great um, thing that I remember that they did a, a great exaggeration on was during a hurricane season, and the reporter was yes. standing there, and he was like, "The wind is gushing, yes. and I, it's, if you can see, I don't know if you can see behind me, all the trees." And then somebody just started walking behind. Yes. <laughs> And they were just walking, yeah. looking, with walking their dog, looking like, yes. why is he shaking? And this weather is just going. You can see the wind behind me. Sir, I see someone walking calmly <laughs> behind you. And that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to freak out. He wants us to panic and have all of these over-exaggerated thought. But that is not what God wants for yes. us. He yeah. wants us to stay calm in the midst of everything that we're going through. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, he tells us, do not be anxious about anything. Yes. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So if you want the peace of God and you want him to guard your heart, you can't be anxious about anything. You have to cast all your cares to Jesus. Yes. Casting means you're throwing it so far out that you can't even see it or try to grab it back if you try. So when you're casting something, you're throwing that thing way out there. Yes. Fear, when it tries to come, you got to throw it away from you and say, yes. no, I'm not going to buy into it. I'm not going to be caught up into the newsman rocking and shaking, shaking and rocking like the, everything's going crazy. Trust God. Believe God. Make sure you keep 
focus on what God is saying for you to do. If you know your health is not that good, of course you need to stay, monitor where you're going. Don't be all out talking about you at parties and whatever else. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. If, but if you're in good health, no health problems, you shouldn't be locked up in your house, scared and like, hmm, I ain't touching nobody. I know one um, report I saw that a woman, she was locked into her house, she didn't go out for weeks, still got the coronavirus. She ordered a package, the package came to the house, and the, she got the virus from something that was delivered to her house. So she might as well went on out and did what she wanted to do. So don't get so fearful and think that your methods are going to save you because it's not your methods come on, come that are on, going to on. save you. It is Christ's hand of protection yeah. over your life, keeping you. Remember, you can't go anywhere unless Jesus Christ himself or God himself signs the yes. death certificate. Amen. Come on, right. give God some praise. Oh, and, well. and, and I want to open this up for you all. I want to hear what your favorite go-to scripture is during this time. Um, if you can just come up to the mic. I want to hear what your go-to scripture is. What, what has been jumping out uh, at you? What have you been relying on during this time? What scripture has been keeping you during this time? We've been sharing, you know, some of the scriptures that we've been uh, relying on. Uh, Pastor Franklin shared Psalms 91, mm -hmm. uh, He that dwells in, in the secret, secret place. place of the most high shall abide the under the shadow of the yes. almighty God. What have you been relying on? What have you been, you know, hunkering down on during this time <laughs> as believers in God? You all should have a scripture. Uh, no one has come up to the mic just yet, but every one of y'all should have a scripture that you have <laughs> been relying on, something that you have been keeping in your hearts. David said it like this, I hide the word of God in my heart so I won't sin against him. You got to have something um, that that you have been um, been uh, just just holding down, so to speak. Yes. All right. Come on. Got to drop it down some. <laughs> For our vertically challenged saints. It's still Is it on? Uh, yeah, just go ahead and turn it on. It's okay. On. Yeah. Pull, yeah, pull it down. Yeah, you got a mask on. Yeah. Uh, Amen. Ooh, I will yes. keep him in perfect peace. Per, not just regular peace. Perfect. Not just sometime of peace. Perfect. But the peace. perfect peace no, no. whose mind stayed. is stayed on him. Come on, yes. give me some more. Come on. Yes. Come on, this Tuesday night. Come on, give me some more. What else have you been relying on? Real talk. No one want to talk tonight. All right. <laughs> we'll move on. All right. So, pastors. Let us give you this question. Has the pandemic affected you or your family in any way? Yes. Um, I'll, I'll take this one because I actually delight in it. Um, I was one of the ones that lost my job mm -hmm. during the pandemic. And can I tell y'all, it has been the best time of my life. <laughs> can I tell you, the first time that clock didn't go off at 545, I told God, thank you. <laughs> you know, where everybody else might have been like, oh, my God, you lost your job. Can I tell y'all that God has been so Faithful, y'all. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean, yes. I work harder now that I don't have a job mm -hmm. than I did back in the day. God has provided. I remember when I lost my job, I sent the pastors a message. And I was like, hey, guys, I just want y'all to know I lost my job, so it might be a minute before I can start paying tithes again. Y'all, I ain't missed a Sunday. I have not missed it. God keeps putting money yes. in my pocket. So for me, it was one of those things where it was truly, I, well, here's the thing. I've never had a moment yet mm -hmm. where I got scared. Mm. I heard God say, matter of fact, when we were getting the, the stimulus check and, you know, the CARE Act was doing their mm -hmm. thing, God told me, even after that ends, that's not going to stop the money that I'm going to give to you. Amen. So I haven't yes. had a moment to freak out. We still eat real good, y'all. <laughs> as, <laughs> as you can Amen. tell. As you can tell. Yeah, we, um, let me think. We, I know there was um, two podcasts that we did where we were able to interview Miss Thelma. Mm -hmm. And another lady who is not born again, like, mm. at all um, in Fort Lauderdale. But she spoke of how she overcame the coronavirus. And so we were able to podcast them and, and uh, let other people hear how to eat right, as you were mm -hmm. talking about, how to uh, 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 change your dieting, mm -hmm. uh, sleep patterns, just, just a lot of good things. And then the, the woman who was not saved at all, we had to kind of mute her 
when she was giving her an interview because she was so happy and she was just dropping words and cussing and going on. But, but, but. She was, so she's like, I just want to thank my effing God. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Whoa. <laughs> she was so excited. She's she like, was, oh, I know y'all pastors. I'm sorry. I was like, hey, man, so I get it. to me. Dang. I was like, whoa. Uh, yeah, we was believing that all yeah. kind of stuff. <laughs> but it, it's been good because. Talk about the joy of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. But she understood, though. She yeah. Understood. yeah. I mean, so we've been able to podcast and, and uh, spread. Uh, even uh, this lady in Melbourne. I'm saying it wrong. Melbourne, Australia. I came across a uh, psychiatrist who was giving information of uh, to children and, and to husbands and wives and exercising in the pandemic and what do you do in your home and using your time wisely. And so um, one thing that changed about me was just the information and just making sure I'm getting that information out to other people. And yes. uh, we even legalized our business now. You know, yeah. we begin yes. to do more. Uh, Amen. In the middle of a yeah. pandemic, of a pandemic. Yeah. it's still open yeah. door season. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. So I've been able to do more photography and graphics and videos. And uh, we just got like two more mm. clients today, I think it was. Yeah. And, yeah. and so uh, we've been able to really free ourselves up and yeah. allow God Amen. to just dump on our plate those things that we really desire, our heart's desire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, and here's the thing. I don't want anybody to walk away with the thought that, oh, the Franklin's are just perfect. They had no problems. No. When you lose your job, you lose your job. You lose yeah. your income. You don't know what's going to happen. You know, mm -hmm. they tell you that you should have at least three months of whatever your salary is saved up in the bank. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that, to be honest with you. So when I, when literally, they called me on a Friday and was like, we don't know how we're going to bring you back, so today's your last day. Oh, okay, Jesus. Like, what do you do with that? So I don't want anybody walking away thinking that everything is just Gucci. But when you have your foot planted in yes. God, yes. that's the difference. You know, when storms come, I kid you not, it's kind of like the three little pigs thing. You know, if you've been building your foundation already, yes. come on. a storm can come and it's not going to blow your house down. Amen. So that's what I would like to leave with everybody. Don't get it twisted that we just had this perfect life and God is just wonderful all the time and it's rainbows. Mm -hmm. No, stuff happens. Yep. Our families, they didn't have their foot in God like we had ours. So we had to even live out our faith in a brand new way. Yeah. In a yeah. brand new way because now you're not living just for yourself. Mm -hmm. You're living for other people. Mm -hmm. And that was a completely different walk that I think either one of us have ever had to deal with. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Amen. And, and, this is real talk too. And we, we stayed in faith with each other. I mean, there, there was not one time when I was like, you know, thinking about the fact that she lost her job and I was in the worry and I was questioning her and questioning me, you know, we stayed in faith. I mean, it was the best thing I think that could have happened to us uh, to get us to where we are right now. And I would encourage even husbands and wives now or any household to where there was a loss of income mm. to uh, the best thing you can do is to, to keep one mind. That's and, good. and walk in unity That's good. and, and yes. you know, don't, don't change the dynamics of the house, you know, with arguing and worrying because I'm sure it's going to present itself. But man, we, we have had just a great time just laughing and joking and having fun and building this dream of ours together. It's Amen. Good. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah. Real talk Tuesday. Yeah. Real and, and, issues. Yeah, yeah. And all these things are good. And um, this is what we can expect to happen in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm talking about for forward partners. Remember, God gave us the word when the year came in that this would be the year of the open door. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think God is probably humorous because in a year where all the doors are closed worldwide, yeah. God still has an open door for yeah. the believers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Revelation, yeah. it says, yeah, I put before you an open door yes. um, that no man can shut. Yeah. Yes. Why? Because you have been faithful. Mm. And the scripture goes on to say, even though you have little strength. Mm. We're not the biggest church around here, but God sure been blessing us big yes. around here. Amen. Giving out big Amen. blessings. Yeah. Yeah. God has been giving people businesses. Yeah. And, and um, I believe I shared something um, today um, where uh, one of our partners, she's going to be starting her own nail salon. Yeah. I'm talking about a black-owned business yeah. Yeah. in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. God has been pouring out houses, brand spanking new from the ground up yeah. for the partners of the Forward Christian yeah. Center. We got people getting married in the middle of a yeah. pandemic. <laughs> Amen. People have been getting increases. People have been getting cars, y'all, for the first time, y'all. Yeah, been catching Uber and Lyft all their life. <laughs> and JTA. And JTA. And Pat and Jerry. That's but foot. now... <laughs> She has her own car. Yes. God has been faithful, y'all. Yes. And 
scripture is coming to mind. I hear it in my spirit. Whatsoever things are lovely and of a good report. Think on these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think on these things. Yeah, we know we live in a world where all kind of things happening. People dying on the left. People dying on the right. But think on the good thing. You still here. You still alive. You still got strength in your body. Still got food on your table. Still got clothes on your back. You still here. Scripture says, thousand may fall on thy side and 10,000 on their right hand, but ain't coming. Not my dwelling. Yeah, that's what we can believe. Those are some exclusive scriptures for the believer. And we just want to encourage you, don't take what we share lightly. Mm -hmm. You heard the word of God come across that says, as your faith is, so it be unto you. You heard the word that says, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. You heard, peace I leave with you. Uh, Not like the world give. Mm -hmm. You know, you heard all these scriptures that says, keep your mind stayed on me. All of these things that's happening, what is it doing? It's feeding your faith, y'all. Y'all, faith is rising. God is protecting us through the faith, yes. through, through the faith that we have in him. Yes. So I just want to encourage you to not be afraid, yes. neither be dismayed. Yes. Know that the Lord thy God is with us every step of the way. Yes. Let's give God some praise. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Let's, let's, let's have some closing remarks up here. Yeah. Uh, let's close it out. Um, what would you say to someone who has experienced the worst of this pandemic? Somebody who may have uh, lost a job, lost a loved one, uh, someone who may be sick right now. What would you say to them? Hey Amen. You know, I would encourage them to, uh, uh, to keep the faith and to get plugged in. Um, one thing that I'm reminded of that, that we learned a long time ago is that we operate under a different jurisdiction mm. and economy. Yes. And that may be foreign to a lot of people. Um, and so I, I try to educate people in that way. You know, yes. that's why I understand the, the principle of sowing, mm-hmm. of, of continuing to, to, to sow my seed, you know, make sure I have something in the, in the, in the earth. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for the ones who have experienced that, I am intentional. Mm-hmm. If yes. I'm saying I'm going to pray for you, come on, come on. I'm doing it right then and right there. Yeah. Um, I haven't told anyone yet that, oh, I understand. I don't. I don't understand, you know, and so because I haven't lost anyone to COVID, you know, and so, um, but I am um, uh, sympathetic. I'm empathizing with people. And again, the best that I can do is just be intentional with what I'm doing and just listening and availing myself to be there for people. Amen. I think the two things that I would tell anybody going through this time, the first thing is to be open to what God wants to do in this season of your life. There's things that we encounter, guys, that can take the wind completely out of our sail. But there's always purpose in it. It's yeah. always. I kid you not, if I would not have lost my job, I would not be working on a clothing line right now. Ooh. But God. Because yes. now I had the time to do it. Yes. Yes. Now I was able to settle myself to hear what he told me yes. to do. Yes. And when I was afraid, he sent people to send me text messages that said, God told me to tell you, fear is not in you. Stop being afraid. Ooh. They didn't even know what I was going through. Yes. Wow. Yes. But God. So you have to stay open even in the worst times of your life, in the worst pains of your life. Yes. You have to know that we serve a uh, God who is our dad. He's not sitting in heaven who just has nothing better to do but to let you go through something. No. Everything that happens happens for a reason. And then I would tell you to know that you are no different than anybody else who's getting blessed. There was a post that I put up um, the other day and it was just, it spoke to me because it said, God shut the lion's mouth for Daniel. He parted the Red Seas for Moses. He gave a baby to Sarah. He will do the same for you. Yes. And when you put yourself in that category, you yeah. realize that yeah. he's not a respected person. Yes. So when you are going through the worst pain, I'm telling you, when you feel like God has left you, yeah. when you feel like, how do I get past this pain? Mm. Even the pain of losing somebody, it's a void. Yes. It really is. Let's yeah. just be real. It's a, a pain in your heart that almost nothing can feel mm. but God. 
but yeah. God. And when you open yourself up to his healing, when you open yourself up to his way and no longer your way, you will find out that you will get everything that you wanted. Yes. You will get that expected end. Yes. That's, that's his promise. Yes. 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 And so many times we want us, you want God to give you the expected end based on your route. But sometimes he's going to take a detour. Sometimes there's somebody else along the way that's going to need what you have yeah. on your way to your expected end. Yeah. But when you get there, y'all, he's going to give you double on. for your trouble. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's going to give you more than what you originally yes. asked him for. Yes. 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 So that's my encouragement. Don't forget who you serve. Mm -hmm. It's not a God that's just sitting up in heaven. He's your father. Yes, he is. Stay open. And y'all, matter of fact, we just got word the other day. We got pre-approved to build a house. We just found this out. It's still, it's still open, open door, door season. season. <laughs> so <laughs> last year, we didn't even think about it, y'all. We yeah. think about credit. We think about what's in our bank account. We yeah. think about what we yeah. can do. Yeah. And in the midst of a pandemic, God just say pre-approved. Come on. Y'all already on. good. That's God the God that awesome. we serve. Better than good. Yeah, better yes. than good. Hallelujah. So stay open. Yes. Stay open. Yes. yes. Stay open. Don't try to figure it out and on your own. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct Thank your man. path. Thank you, Lord. So stay the, stay the course. Don't try to figure this thing out on your own. Trust God. Let him make the way for you. He'll always do it way better than we ever can yeah. anyways. Yeah. So let God be God in your life. Walk by faith. Don't worry about what you see with your own natural eyes because God is asking you the question, who you going to believe, me or your lying eyes? <laughs> you got to trust God knowing that he is going to make the way yes, he will. out of every way. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Were y'all able to get anything out of tonight's session? Amen. Amen. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. Reaches to me. You are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches. Reaches to me. Come on, in the beauty of your, in the beauty, in the fullness, in the fullness. In the fullness of your grace. Come on, let's rock it, let's rock it. In the power of your name. You lift me. You lift me up. Come on, get it down in your spirit. You lift me up. You lift me up in the fullness, in the fullness yep. of your grace, in the power, in the power of your name. You lift me up. You lift me Hallelujah. Up. God is lifting you up right now. He's picking you up. You lift He's lifting me your spirit. Up. Hallelujah. Every heavy burden is broken in the name of Jesus. We love you, God. We honor you. We thank you for your Shekinah glory. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies that's here in this place. We thank you for your hedge of protection all around us. Hallelujah. No sickness or disease shall come now our dwelling in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots, but we will believe and trust in the name of our Lord. Yes. The name that is above all other names, the name that is above sickness, disease, pandemics, that name is Jesus. God, we continue to hold fast to the word of God. We continue to hold fast to what you have promised us in this day and in this time. Let the men of God begin to rise up yes, and speak yes. life to their wives, to their children, and to their homes. Let your daughters begin to rise up and begin to saturate and condition the atmosphere. Let your teens, let these young adults begin yes, to Lord. stand up 
and begin to impregnate their neighborhood with faith and integrity, God. Yes, yes. This is the time for the believers to rise Come up. Come on. This is the time where we get to shine. This is the time where we get to put our faith and our king on display. And so we'll do nothing less, God, but please the Father. We'll do nothing less than point men back to you because of the Holy Ghost living inside of us. So when we open up yes. our mouth, we will begin to speak nothing but Holy Ghost. When we open up our mouth, we'll begin to say nothing but what Holy Ghost has to say. And God, we decree and declare nothing but good in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you right now for everything that you are doing and everything that you've spoken on this night. I decree and decre declare, Father God, that faith has risen in this building. Faith has risen on those that are walking or watching us online. We decree and declare that each and every person under the yes. sound of my voice, Father God, will leave better than when they came in. I thank you for what you're doing in their households. I thank you for what you're doing in their finances. I thank you for what you're doing in their bodies. I thank you for what you're doing with their loved ones. Father God, I decree peace over each and every person, Father God. Peace in their minds. Peace when they go to sleep. Peace when they wake up. Peace in the name of Jesus to trust you even the more. Yes. I yes. thank you for the expected end come that on, you come have on. for us. Glory come be on. to God. I thank you according to our faith, we will have it even in the midst of a pandemic. For this, Father God, we give you praise. You are good. We love you and we bless you and receive, receive every blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, be lifted high in this place. God, we magnify you. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord God, for the word of God that yes. is sealed in our heart. Father, I thank you for faith coming Hallelujah. up to another level. Yes. I thank you for faith. God, going over and over and over and bubbling over in the lives of your saints. I thank you, Lord God, that they are stirred in their spirit. Yes. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for opening up their heart, God. Opening up their mind, God, to believe and trust you just a little while longer. Father Hallelujah. God, I thank you, Lord God, for that person who did not believe that they can make it. But God, I thank you today Hallelujah. that you're telling them that they can keep on keeping on. I thank you, Lord God, that faith is restored in the lives of your people. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for your mind, God, being inside of your people. Let this mind, you said, be in us. That is also in Christ Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for the mind of Christ yes. over the people of God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that our health is strong, our faith yes. is strong, our minds are strong, God. Our homes, God, are coming up, and they are strong. And, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your seal and your hand of protection your over the people Hallelujah. of God. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping us. Thank you, God, for equipping us. And thank you, Lord, for sending us for such a time as this in Jesus name come on let's give God some praise